which will be presented by Alok Raja, uh, who is a research scientist, a uh, research architect at Bosch. He's going to present generative AI on the edge for connected vehicles and mobility. Alok. Thank you. Thank you uh, for the introduction and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you, Dynamel Foundation for this opportunity. So I work with Bosch uh, India and uh, we are currently uh, focusing on full stake AI optimization for both mobility and non-mobility domain. So what I'm going to talk uh, today is that uh, where we are realizing solutions for um, having generative AI on the edge for vehicular ecosystem for bringing you know the hyper personalization part. While we go and then uh, dig deeper about it, uh, I would like to also give an emphasis that why from say the automotive domain, this uh, bringing generative AI on the A's is critical and what are some of the best practices and then the future research direction where the community can help, yeah. So we have seen, you know, the generative AI where a lot of huge cases from the enterprise for automation are happening, which are currently hosted on the cloud, right? But as a user, there is a shell cognizance that um, I am dealing with or generating say, a lot of personal data. Why can't I have my solution which is working offline or where I can interact with the system with low latency aspect? So the issues like you know the data privacy where you really don't have to share the data if it is getting generated or the solution what you're going to offer from the automotive side it should not go beyond your country then how you're going to provide that and then the lot of uh, uh, ai regulations are coming to the picture where uh, the data privacy is one of the critical aspect where uh, we have seen this kind of you know the answers from the AI or the tiny ML as a, a technology perspective, but for the generative AI, it is still a concern where uh, there is a lot of push that why can't we realize the generative AI on the edge itself? And then we do have uh, general purpose LLMs which are working fine, but when you are going to customize it for a specific use cases, such as say the automotive domain or the industrial IoT use cases, it is also possible that the responses what we are going to uh, receive from the generative AI solution, it may not be always true. How you are going to bring that uh, robustness of your model is another uh, driving factor where a lot of discussions are happening in this space. Again, cost and energy part is very well known about how much GPUs and the compute infra it needs from the uh, inferencing to the pre-training aspect also. So why can't, uh, considering say the automotive domain where you have the enough compute available in your vehicular ecosystem, is it possible to realize the same on the uh, vehicle side of it or providing you know the solutions on top of it yeah so moving forward uh, if you see this generative ai in the automotive domain lot of buzz in market is already there people have uh, been publishing and then reporting that OEMs are seeing a lot of value uh, for the generative ai but i will be just briefing here from the the oems side where the lot of value creation for the customer side is more critical. So one of the demonstrated solution is in the design and prototyping side. So uh, where say one of the OEM, what they have been doing is that using generative AI for the design to design a aerodynamic system for electric vehicles. And, and it is reported uh, that whatever the development efforts they have been investing before leveraging say the generative AI, it is reduced by 30%. And uh, for the same electric vehicle, the mileage is also improved by 50 miles compared to the gasoline, okay? Now, from the autonomous vehicle, lot of interesting use cases about, you know, how to understand the cross-cut scenarios and developing the perception AI. Uh, for this autonomous and semi-autonomous driving is also one of the capabilities where the generative AI has been really promising. It is not possible that you can go to the road and then test the entire use cases. A lot of, you know, the clearance from the regulation side is needed if you want to go and then test your vehicle for with certain functionalities on the road, yeah? So 
their uh, companies like you know the uh, different OEMs are including Boss. We have different you know the test beds where we really can't go outside the lab, but we we can uh, do these kind of testings inside the lab. So to avoid such scenarios where you really don't understand how your system is going to behave when you have this kind of you know the sudden change or the dynamism in your environment, this kind of uh, uh, research for the generative AI where people have used generative AI is another. Uh, um, value proposition where uh, this has been realized and then it is very well endorsed in the community as well the another side where we have been providing the solution is that uh, your uh, cockpit companion solution where uh, providing say, the uh, assistance for the different users uh, along with some kind of you know the empathy or the emotion aware intelligence so this kind of product where boss is already providing the solution uh, where we have been realizing but from here now we are also envisioning that why can't we leverage you know the personal preferences and then uh, bring say the more personalized you know the experiences where the people or the user who is driving the vehicle should be more connected towards the solution what is uh, going to be there as a integrated solution on the vehicle again a uh, lot of you know the information in the market where the people have been talking about the preventive maintenance use case supply chain logistics but it is still in the progression phase where we are not seeing you know the lot of interest from the customer side then how it is really helping uh, whether we really have to use the genetic AI or it is possible to use you know the more uh, conventional AI or the intelligent algorithms where we can provide such kind of solutions. So this this is something where it's still a lot of research efforts are needed. Yeah, so moving forward, uh, we are currently uh, uh, envisioning for one of the solutions what we are currently uh, developing and uh, trying to have a lot of you know the hyper personalization services on top of it is that uh, in, in cabin, you know, the experiences what you have. So what we are trying to have is that we want to tap on the personal preferences as well as the kind of vehicle you are driving, right? So we, we are currently um, focusing on domain specific data to be uh, collected. Again, a lot of efforts are going in there and then, but if I have to go through this uh, circle, so we have, let's say vehicle sensors, so your, uh, where a lot of sensors are there inside your vehicle. This is honor manual, what kind of vehicle you are driving, then the driving policy, the other information base, that is something where you have the digital avatars and then uh, your personal branding materials also. Then combining this all, you are creating say, the uh, training data. And then we have the multimodal foundation model, which is getting trained on the cloud. From there, we are doing uh, the optimization approaches like quantization and the knowledge distillation to make it more fine-tuned and then making it personalized. So this is, let's say, getting deployed where uh, users can have the prompt and then there are situational events also, right? This is, again, where the is cloud part where some of the offloading has to go to the cloud or let's say some of the historical data has to go to the cloud and then the other inferencing should be processed on the edge so you really don't leave the data from the edge part uh, or say your vehicle side of it uh, we are also uh, this is again not materialized yet but we have this envision where we want to have this different productivity applications where the uh, digital assistance can be provided if you want to should do a lot of you know the task while driving and then when you are in the autonomous mode so this is say the real time data where it is also possible let's say if you have the sensors be it say your front end or in the rear uh, rear seat you can have the situational awareness of your surroundings before you start so this can give you the idea that hey uh, there is an obstacle or you have really a less space to, from where, when you are parking from uh, i mean when you are starting from say the parking location to the another location so such kind of assistance can be uh, driven now <clears throat> from the contextual information where we are envisioning this kind of solution where we do have a lot of tractions from the customer side is that uh, we also have a um, <clears throat> situations where the solutions where uh, this kind um, uh, in vehicle uh, uh, solutioning is that let's say if you are driving from one location to other but you have driven say a couple of days back so it can also give you the suggestions that i have driven something wrong where my my acceleration was too high and then the mileage is dropped to certain you know 
uh, the desired uh, or say the um, user or the owner's uh, perspective where the uh, mileage is really dropped. So it can also give you a suggestion or recommendation that you really don't have to, uh, you know, keep on changing the gears or the acceleration and you have this kind of settings which which is uh, certainly can be helpful from the user side of it now moving forward while we talk about you know the bringing generative ai on the edge but what are the different best practices where we are currently focusing is that from the architecture to the inference algorithms and then the quantization side right now we are not more focused on the pruning side we are just leveraging the quantization and the knowledge distancing part where uh, we have our uh, uh, teacher model and then from there we are bringing the lightweight models to the vehicle part which can be deployed on the vehicle side of it so again uh, there are a lot of you know the research efforts needed for your distributed ai or also say the hybrid ai aspect where the as and then cloud can combine together to certain certainly uh, processing some of the information on the cloud side and then some on the a side which really needs a lot of uh, uh, efforts from the development side and then then this has to be tested in the real time so that we check on the robustness of the uh, model and then whether the desired output is received at the terminal end or not so from the uh, automotive domain side we really have to have you know the lot of standardization effort where we share the knowledge information what is has been the best practices and then the lot of partnership effort are required from the oems and then the academic universities we really have to have uh, the trust uh, which should be there for the user that how the data is getting leveraged whether i should use such kind of solution which is getting recommended from the genetic ai solutions or not so this trust issues we really have to uh, address from the automotive domain side and then this is again my last slide uh, from the uh, vehicle ecosystem we have a lot of you know the thoughts around the hybrid ai where we have to offload the certain ca compute capabilities to the cloud versus the as so with this i will stop here and I'm thank you very much Alok. a big thank you again to all of our sponsors that make this possible uh, in particular, thank you to the executive strategic partners of TIMO, Qualcomm AI, Advancing AI Research to make efficient AI ubiquitous, also Sentient, making Edge AI a reality, the Platinum strategic partners, Embed UR, uh, Sony AI, to uh, deploy Vision AI at the edge of scale, the Gold strategic partners, Arm, Edge Impulse, Infineon, Renaissance, ST Micro, and Synaptics. And the silver strategic partners, which we have here, AI Zip, Arduino, Brainship, Efficient, Greenwaves, Gravity, Climax, Imagimob, Inetera, Noda AI, NXP, Procter Gamble, Schneider Electric, SenseML, Silicon Labs, and TDK. So that concludes our first day. Don't forget, we have a lot more action back agenda for tomorrow as well, starting at the same time. So that concludes our session for today. And thank you for joining everyone. See you tomorrow.